Hello, today's Bible study comes from Luke chapter 13, verses 22 through 29, and reads as follows. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading. Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. Amen. Well, you know, Jesus is on his path to Jerusalem to be crucified and he's still working for the Lord. He goes through the towns and villages and he's teaching them. He's teaching people and he's telling them things. He is still preaching the word of God to his death. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? And Jesus didn't say yes or no right away, but he did answer them right away. He said to them, first of all, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. When he told them to enter through that narrow door, he was telling them it's going to be small. Everyone won't be saved. This door is narrow, and he speaks to the narrow door for a reason. And he says, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. So he's telling you, everybody is not going to be saved. And just because you think you're saved, you're not. It's a narrow door. It's not a wide door. So he's telling you. Make sure that you are ready. Jesus pointed back to the only person's salvation we can really know, asking, are you yourself saved? That's what he was also saying to him. I tell you, he tells him, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Be saved. Because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. And once the owner of the house, the Lord, gets up and closes the door, that's it. You will be outside of the kingdom of God. And he says you'll be outside knocking and pleading, sir, open the door for us. What he is telling you is once the door is closed, it is closed. It is not going to open back up in the morning, in the afternoon, or at night. It is closed. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord is talking to them, and they're they're having a curious. There's a curiosity here, and the the real question they should ask is, Lord, can I be saved? How can I be saved, Lord? And He has been telling them, telling them this. A narrow gate, the door, also implies that we won't be taking anything else with us. There won't be no things unnecessary. It's just going to be us. So you can't take your child. They have to do that for themselves. We have to lead them and tell them who the Lord is and show them, but they have to have their personal relationship so they can get in that narrow door. We ain't taking any material because it won't make it to glory. We must strive in order to be with the Lord to get rid of all the earthly things because none of these earthly things will see heaven not even this physical form I am in if the Lord calls me and I make it too it won't be in this form Ooh. and when it says strive when you strive for something it's a fight it ain't it ain't something that's just boom I got it 
It's a fight. It's a struggle. It is a battle. And when you do it, if you want it hard enough, you'll strive for it. You'll work at it. You'll practice. You'll fight. You'll do the things you need to complete the task in order to get there. See, because many are going to come to this gate. And they're not going to be able to get in that gate. So we have to strive to, to get to this gate and be ready to go through the narrow door. Because some don't like it now. And when it comes time for them to call on the Lord, they're not going to be able to. It's not going to fit their need. The main thing is, no matter how narrow, wide, or whatever this gate may be, it will be a terrible thing to refuse to enter into it. So while you have a chance to offer to enter into it, take it. Get prepared. Because when it comes time to go in there, and you don't go, you ain't going to be here. And that means through all the suffering, through all the pain, whatever, you're going to have to work to it. You're going to have to work through it. So, as they're talking, Jesus says, once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading. That's us. Because we're going to be asking the Lord, take us with you. We don't want to be here. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to be without you, but we won't know it and admit it until it's too late. So get ready now, because this is what's going to happen when you try to think you're ready at the last second. He will answer simply, I don't know you or where you come from. And then you will say, we ate and drank with you and taught in our and you taught in our streets. If you didn't take it in when I was doing it, then he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. Because remember, when he was teaching and everything in the streets, the Pharisees was trying to trap him, setting up to kill him. Wicked is what we are. Wicked is what we will be if we don't have the Lord. And they stayed wicked. They continued to do wicked things and they Continue. Now, he tells you what's going to happen with this, too. There will be weeping there. There will be gnashing of teeth. Oh, and when you see Abraham, who I've been telling you about, who was professing to love me and left Ur to be with me, his son Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets of the kingdom of God, they're going to be with me. But you yourself will be thrown out. People will come from the east and the west and the north and the south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. First of all, remember in Acts that the Lord said he wanted his word to go to the four corners of the earth. So expect the word to be showing up from the four corners of the earth, the east, the west, the north, and the south. And where will they take their places at in the feast? In the kingdom of of God. They will be in the door. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first. Remember, the poor, the widows, God has a special place for them. And they may have been last here, but they'll be first there. And the first who will be last He's not saying if you doing well and all that here that you can't make it to heaven. But you might have had all the glory and all that. And you might have been doing right here, but you will be last. But the main point is that you get to get in there. So get ready for that door. Get ready to have it open up and be ready to go into it. Amen.